Hello, everybody. In this lecture, we will be continuing with lifting machines. We have already covered five lifting machines. And now we will start with the next one, that is simple wheel and axle. This is a machine that even small children, uh, I mean, at school level, they, they can make and uh, they sometimes put it in science fair exhibitions and all. It's a very simple lifting machine, which provides a clear mechanical advantage. Now, some of you might not be able to understand the concept from this shown figure over here for simple wheel and axle. So what I'll do is I'll try to explain the concept with the help of a slightly tilted figure or rather an isometric view of this figure. So let's see how this looks. The simple wheel and axle actually consists of two cylindrical drums which are rigidly connected to each other. So this one is an axle which is nothing but a cylindrical extension connected over a larger wheel Now this larger disc is called as the wheel and the smaller cylinder is called as the axle. They are rigidly connected to each other. So if somehow I make this wheel move in this direction, then the axle will be forced to move in the same direction. But obviously, since the diameters of the wheel and axle are different, the speed or the tangential speed of rotation of the wheel and axle will be different. So this is the fact that we take advantage of in order to obtain mechanical advantage. Now let us see how we use it. Rope is wound independently around the axle as well as the wheel. So what we do is we wind a rope. Okay, let me use another color of the pencil so that it will be more clear to you. And The rope is bound around the wheel like this. And eventually this comes down. And this is where you apply the effort. The effort is applied on the larger wheel. The axle is similarly Bound around with the help of another rope. But the only difference is that the rope is coming out of the axle from the other side. And this is where you attach your load W. Now, this is the configuration of a simple wheel and axle. The two dimensional front view is shown here. So what you see over here is just an additional frame that is provided. This is the additional frame that is provided. These are ball bearings for the stem that is supporting the wheel and the axle. Now you see the load that is suspended on the rope is coming from the other side of the axle. And the rope that is wound around the wheel is coming, coming from the front of the wheel. So it is much clearer in this image. This is how the rope is coming from the front and this is how the rope is going from the back. Okay, now what will happen is if I pull this rope downwards, 
then as you can clearly see the direction of rotation of the wheel will be like this now if the wheel is going to rotate in the clockwise direction then obviously the axle will also rotate in the clockwise direction now when the axle is made to rotate in the clockwise direction this load will be lifted up because this axle will wind the rope upwards and the load will be lifted upwards so essentially what is happening due to this opposite winding of wires or ropes on the wheel and axle is when you pull the rope on the wheel downwards the load is lifted upwards now once you have understood this let us go back to the figure and see what is the meaning or what is the derivation of velocity ratio once again it should be reminded to you that we are after finding the velocity ratio of this machine simple wheel and axle now capital d is the diameter of the wheel and small d is the diameter of the axle and clearly capital d is greater than small d now you see when you pull the effort rope downwards then the load rope is going to climb upwards or in other words you apply your effort towards the direction of gravity in the downward direction and the load is going to climb up okay now in order to compute the velocity ratio of this machine what you have to do is consider one revolution or one rotation of the wheel and axle so this is what you have to write in your answer after drawing this figure consider one revolution of wheel and axle so in one revolution or 360 degrees of rotation since the diameter of your wheel is capital d and the diameter of your axle is small d the total distance covered by the effort will be pi capital d why is that so because in one revolution of any circular disk if you make this circular disk rotate in any direction by one revolution then the circumferential distance traveled is equal to 2 pi r whatever is the radius of the this is the complete diameter here so if we consider radius the complete circumferential rotation traveled will be 2 pi r or it is also equal to pi d because 2 into r is diameter so the effort arm moves a circumferential distance of pi d while at the same time the load attached to this rope climbs up by a distance of pi into small d and by what is pi into small d it is the circumferential distance covered by the axle in one complete rotation so if the wheel is made to rotate by one ro revolution then the axle will also make one revolution or one rotation and in one rotation the distance or the circumferential distance traveled by the wheel is pi d and the circumferential distance traveled by the axle is pi small d so in in this way we automatically have the total distance traveled by the effort as pi d and the total distance traveled by the load as pi small d okay now we can simply construct mechanical advantage is equal to load upon distance and since pi d is the distance traveled by the effort we can simply put it as y and since pi into small d is the distance traveled by the effort sorry by the distance traveled by the load we can simply put it as x and 
velocity ratio is simply given as the ratio of y by x or the distance traveled by effort to the distance traveled by the load so if you simply substitute the values of y and x your velocity ratio comes out to be pi capital d upon pi small d where pi and pi cancel out it is simply d upon small d so eventually what you have is velocity ratio is capital d by d mechanical advantage is generally given by w by p and even if you want you can even calculate or find the expression for efficiency efficiency is simply the ratio of mechanical advantage and velocity ratio so you have your mechanical advantage here you have your velocity ratio here you simply divide it and the expression of efficiency is found like this but our basic aim was to find velocity ratio see there is nothing new in mechanical advantage written over here mechanical advantage we already knew is already given by w by p so there is nothing new no new formula is developed here we already know this this is the new formula that we know so the velocity ratio of a simple wheel and axle is simply given as the ratio of diameter of the wheel to the diameter of the axle that's all so the larger the diameter of the wheel more will be the velocity ratio okay and if you take a larger wheel you will get more mechanical advantage more load can be lifted if the diameter of the wheel is increased so this was about simple wheel and axle now let us go to the next machine that is wheel and differential axle one minute okay now since you have already understood the concept of a simple wheel and axle so if you consider this wheel and differential axle figure shown over here and consider only this much part of the machine you see the one that i have highlighted in the red box so this is your wheel and this is your axle so the only additional thing that is added in this machine is another small cylindrical feature extending out of the axle so basically the additional thing in this machine is already the wheel and axle are existing as in the previous machine the only thing is there is an additional part of the axle with the even lesser diameter so if you want to visualize how this one looks this can again be drawn in a very simple isometric view like this so what we say is that the axle is a differential axle that's all what we are saying so there is one step of the axle over here and the axle itself has another step of a larger diameter so what i have drawn over here is still the axle this is the axle's smaller diameter part and this is the axle's larger diameter part and after this comes the actual wheel which is the largest in diameter so this is the wheel which is the largest in diameter and now let me show you how we are going to wind the rope to connect the load and the okay uh, this page is ending here so i will have to make a fresh diagram over here so in my this way okay so the winding is done like this 
one single rope is taken taken in color it is bound around the smaller diameter part of the axle and let us see this is coming out of the front part so this is coming out from the front like this again bindings are present on the larger part of the axle but in this case the rope is coming from the back side and then there is a small pulley over here this is a small pulley and the rope is bound around this pulley so this is the story of one rope that is bound around the two different diameters of the axle and it is supporting a moving pulley or rather you can say that the moving pulley is hanging down from the thread wound around these two parts of the axle and at the center of this wheel is where you attach your load w and again there are windings over the wheel and in the case of the wheel the rope is coming out from the front and this is where you apply your effort now you see all these three are rigidly connected to each other so if you apply your effort here then the direction of rotation of your wheel is in the clockwise direction and if this is rotating in the clockwise direction both parts of your axle will also rotate in the clockwise direction everything the whole combined machinery is going to rotate in the clockwise direction but now see what happens to this particular pulley which is suspended from the wheel in this case when the clockwise rotation of this part is enabled this larger diameter axle is enabled then what happens is this rope is made to wind up but since the rope is coming from the front of the smaller part the clockwise rotation of the smaller part will make sure that the rope is released downwards so this is the mechanism that we want to enable so in short what is happening is by simply rotating the combined pulley system in the clockwise direction or rather simply putting it that by pulling the rope downwards on the wheel the axle's larger part pulls the rope upwards and the axle's smaller part releases the rope downwards okay so continuously if you keep on pulling downwards this rope will be continuously pulled upwards and this rope will be continuously released downwards but you might think that if something is going up and something is coming down then the net effect will be that the wheel the, this weight is not going to be lifted but please remember that the diameters of these two axle parts are different so in one revolution the amount of rope that is pulled up is not the same as the amount of rope released downwards from this one or rather you can say that since this has a larger diameter compared to this one the amount of rope pulled up will be more than the amount of rope coming down so in that case what will happen is if you if you pull more rope and release less rope then eventually you can imagine that the center of this this suspended pulley will slowly start to rise upwards it will start moving upwards slowly and along with this pulley the weight will also move upwards this is the concept <coughs> now let us go back to the original image <clears throat> now you can see and understand from here see rope from the 
smaller axle part is coming from the front rope from the uh, larger diameter part is coming from the back side so when clockwise rotation of the complete assembly is enabled this part of the rope will climb up this part of the rope will be released downwards and since the rate of collection of rope from this is larger than the rate of release of rope from this part the center of this pulley which is actually connected to the weight this line this imaginary line straight line will move up so what we are going to do is <coughs> we are going to consider one single revolution again consider one rotation of the entire assembly in one single rotation of the entire assembly let us see what are the diameters given over here capital d is the diameter of the wheel small d1 is the diameter of the larger part of the axle and small d2 is the diameter of the smaller part of the axle and now what happens is in one rotation the distance moved by the effort arm as discussed earlier it can be simply given as distance moved by the effort arm is also called as y so this will be see this has got a diameter of capital d this has got a diameter of small d1 this has got a diameter of small d2 so in one rotation 2 pi r if it is calculated in terms of d it can be simply written as pi d so the circumferential distance traveled by the effort or simply putting it the distance traveled by the effort is pi d but what is the distance traveled by the load now see this is a little bit difficult to calculate this is the distance traveled by the load in this figure this is your x now in order to find this value of x you have to understand or rather you have to recall your theory of pulleys from your 11th and 12th class studies of physics so let us leave this topic here for a while and go and understand or recall what was taught to you about the climb of a moving pulley so i will draw a simple figure for you here and after this you understand this and then remember it for your lifetime suppose there is a pulley here this is hanging and movable there is another pulley here which is fixed to the ceiling and you are pulling it downwards so what will happen is you are actually collecting the rope downwards so this rope will climb up and since the rope that is being collected from this end has nowhere else to come from this rope will be eventually collected from this side so basically rope from this side is traveling and going to this side climbing over this pulley and since you are pulling all the rope downwards from here what will eventually happen is this movable pulley will start moving upwards slowly now in order to analyze it let us say that you have pulled down 10 meters of rope from this end now this 10 meters of rope that you have pulled from this side has to come from this side only so keeping this in mind that all the 10 meters of the rope that you have pulled from this side has to come from here let us assume that after pulling 10 meters of the rope the climb of the center of the pulley is let us say x
now i want to find out this x i can simply say that since all the 10 meters has to come from this side and the center of the pulley is now located somewhere around here so the pulley is now somewhere here like this this is the new position of my pulley after 10 meters of rope has been collected okay so the rope will be coming from below like this so i can say that this part of the rope plus this part of the rope has disappeared and gone to this side or in other words i can simply say that if this distance or the climb of the center of the pulleys is x then the total amount of rope that has disappeared from the left side and gone to the right side is twice of x or in other words i can say this twice x is the same amount of rope which has disappeared from the left side and gone to the right side and since i have collected a total of 10 meters of rope on the right side this twice of x must be nothing but the same 10 meters so eventually i get my x as half of 10 meters so the only thing that you have to remember regarding such arrangement of pulleys is whenever you see a hanging pulley like this this is important for you to remember it's a very conceptual thing and if you remember if you understand and remember it it will be very good for your future if you see a hanging pulley and you say that i am collecting a total of let us say z meters of rope on this side and if somebody asks you how much will the center of the pulley climb up then you simply say the climb of the pulley will be simply z by 2 that's it. that's the end of story this is what we understood from here because if the climb of the pulley is considered as any distance x then twice of this distance must be the amount of rope that you have collected on this side that is the simple concept so once again i repeat to you if total z amount of rope is collected from the right side of the pulley then the climb of the center of pulley will be z by 2 this is what you have to remember now with the help of this concept we go back to our original problem and let us see how we can apply it now we are interested to find out what will be the motion of the weight see the total distance traveled by effort or small y has already been calculated by us this is simply pi capital d okay and now i am interested to find out how much distance will the load travel which we represent generally by x and we know that the load will actually travel exactly that distance by which the center of this pulley this movable pulley is going to climb upwards so what i will do is i will try to find out how much has this this rope traveled this rope is separate from this rope please remember okay so we cannot say that the upward travel of this will be half of pi d no that will be wrong why will why will it be wrong because this capital pi d is from this rope which is separate and this rope is completely different which is wound around the two parts of the axle so we have to calculate the distance from this rope now that is also not difficult let us see in one revolution since that is what we are giving what will be the rope collected by the larger drum since it is collecting the rope and it is pulling the rope upwards that was established by earlier uh, established by us earlier in this discussion in one revolution wheel b or the larger wheel i should not call it a wheel the b part of the axle will collect exactly pi into small d1 amount of rope this much amount of rope will be pulled upwards but at the same time the c part of the axle is also getting rotated by one revolution and in one revolution since its diameter is d2 how much rope will be released downwards 
the amount of rope in one revolution that will be released downwards is nothing but pi d2 one rotation now see this rope is climbing by a distance of pi d1 this rope is coming down by pi d2 and since d1 is greater than d2 the total amount of rope eventually collected by this drum will be pi d1 minus pi d2 this will be the total amount of rope collected eventually at the right side see if if i had somehow fixed this rope and i would have prevented rope from coming down then the total amount of rope collected by this drum would have been simply pi d1 by 2 okay but the problem is while this drum is collecting the rope by winding it the rope around itself this drum is releasing rope continuously it is not fixed here like in our previous figure in this figure we had seen that one end of the rope was fixed so nothing was being released from here everything that was collected was simply been taken away that's all but in this case rope is being released also so the total amount of rope collected will be amount collected minus amount released so this complete figure gives you the total amount of rope collected from this end from here now if the total amount of rope collected out of this assembly is pi d1 minus pi d2 then applying the same concept how much will be the climb of this movable pulley x then you can simply say that the climb of the pulley will be half of the total rope collected from the right, right hand side so your x is actually pi d1 minus pi d2 upon 2 this is the concept behind this particular arrangement so now you have the distance traveled by your effort and also the distance traveled by the load and once this you have with you you simply divide it over here the distance moved by the effort is y distance moved by the load is x and now the ratio is pi d divided by half of pi d1 minus pi d2 so all you have to do is pi will cancel out you can take this half by taking the 2 in the numerator and you can say that the velocity ratio is twice of capital d upon d1 minus d2 in short you have to remember is remember it like this for a wheel and differential axle this whole axle is called as a differential axle differential axle means an axle which has two different diameters okay so for the wheel and differential axle the velocity ratio can be remembered as simply double the diameter of the wheel divided by the difference between the two diameters of the differential axle so the larger diameter is d1 and the smaller diameter is d2 so the difference between these two taken in the denominator below twice of the diameter of the wheel is the velocity ratio and once again mechanical advantage is the same old definition total weight whatever weight you are putting here and whatever effort you are applying here you divide it you get the mechanical advantage so if mechanical advantage as a formula is known and velocity ratio as a formula is known then efficiency can be simply put as mechanical advantage upon velocity ratio so you divide these two terms w by p whole divided by 2d upon d minus 1 you get this expression you don't have to remember this you just remember this formula this is what is important velocity ratio and this is the formula that is going to stick mechanical advantage is no formula at all w by p to standard definition hai mechanical advantage ki ye koi formula hua hi nahi to ye to bas w by p aise use kar lo aap log velocity ratio is the thing that you have to remember and mechanical advantage upon velocity ratio this expression you can easily recreate in your examination hall isko ratne ki zarurat nahi sirf isko rat lo okay so this brings us to the end of wheel and differential axle and i think for this lecture i will stop here and in the next lecture i will take up
Beston's differential pulley. So the, the concept of Beston's differential pulley is also very simple. But to keep it short, I will take it in the next lecture. I hope you understood the concept of these two. The eventual things that you have to collect from all this is the velocity ratio. In order to small your solve your numerical examples, you have to remember the velocity ratio for each machine. So as soon as somebody puts in your exam that I am using a simple wheel and axle and all that thing, you simply remember, remember simple wheel and axle, velocity ratio is capital D by D. And this simple figure also you have to learn to draw. All these figures I have taken because these are very, very simply represented and they should be reproducible by you. Aapko ye figures apne haath se banane ki practice bhi karni hai. This is very important. Draw the figures whenever a theoretical question can also be asked to derive the expression for velocity ratio and efficiency for simple wheel and axle. In that case, you cannot simply start writing stuff without a figure. You have to make a simple figure and you don't have to make this frame and all. You can simply make a figure like this, like the one that I showed you in the isometric view. See, this, this is not very difficult, this figure. This anybody can draw. See, this can be the figure for your simple wheel and axle. And this can be the figure for your differential wheel and axle. Just label the parts. This is wheel. This is completely, this is the differential axle. Just like that. And show the figure like I have drawn over here. That is sufficient. But you have to draw some simple figures along with your derivation. And instead of the derivation, if a numerical comes, then you don't have to draw the figure, but you have to remember the expressions. So velocity ratio is capital D by D, where capital D is the diameter of wheel, small d is the diameter of axle. Wheel and differential axle, okay. Velocity ratio is 2 capital D by D1 minus D2. D1 and D2 are larger and smaller diameter of the differential axle. Capital D is the diameter of the wheel. In this way, you have to remember. Isko ratke jana hai, taki numerical karte time, aapko kahi pe atakna na pade. So with this, I will stop this small lecture. And then in the further, further lectures, I will continue with the other machines. We will start with Western's differential pulley in the next one. Thank you.